money to broke people because they can't pay you back. Stop paying attention to broken people. They can't pay you back. When you pay attention to broken people and you pour your life into broken people, then it all spills out on the ground because they cannot contain it. And now you're looking for a withdrawal with somebody who couldn't hold a deposit. Stop depositing your life into broken people and find somebody. They might not be perfect, but at least they're whole. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm looking for some whole people. They don't have to be rich. They don't have to be as cute as I want them. Just be whole. Just have enough capacity for me to pour in you without seeing what I poured in you on the ground by tomorrow. People who doubt you, people who hate you, people who judge you are never worth the attention you paid them. 50% of the people in America went through a divorce just like you. The difference between them and you is you never shook it off. You are not the only person that was adopted. Somebody else in this place was adopted like you, but instead of spending their whole life being angry about the fact that their parents gave them to somebody else, they shook it off and started a company. You're not the only person that was molested as a child. You are not the only person that has dyslexia. You are not the only person who has ADHD. You are not the only person that was born in poverty. And God knows you are not the only black person in this room and watching me online. The difference is, is somebody else took the same bite that you had and shake it off. You don't have to hold on to it for the next five years. You don't have to hold on to it for the next 10 years. You don't have to hold on to it for the next 20 years. I command you this moment to find out what bit you and shake. Everybody just do God told me to tell you, I don't change situations according to your pain tolerance. And the reason I don't change it according to your frustration is because if I change the situation according to your frustration, the only thing that will be changed is the situation and not you. And when the situation changes and you stay the same, you change the new opportunity into the old opportunity. That's why you can move from a place and, and move to another city and still can't stand it because you showed up. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me in this place today. Yes, you left Baton Rouge and came to Houston for a better life and you got here and didn't like it but forgot you came. Slap your neighbor, say everywhere you go, there you are. It ain't the city, baby, it's you. It ain't the neighborhood you live in, it's you. It ain't your, it's you. Somebody shout, it's me, oh Lord, standing. Sometimes moving on is the flex. I'll let your boy. Sometimes saying, you know what? You can have it. That's what's up. Sometimes saying, you know what? I'm too big to keep acting this small. You know what? I got a destiny to find out. I got some stuff I got to do. And if I stay with you, and if I stay here fighting with you, we'll both be using our resources to accomplish something that won't benefit either of us. Somebody just shout with me. Say this like you mean to say, move on. Move on. If you ever get a chance, most of you all have, there's a book called The Five Love Languages. One of the biggest lines in the book is this. You cannot love or apologize to a person the way you feel comfortable. You have to love and apologize to them in the way they feel comfortable, which means if I need a verbal apology, you don't get to make me a cake. You can take your cake. <laughs> I'm holy, so I ain't gonna say the rest. Cause I've been saved since I was six, so I'm gonna leave it right there. But you can't, if I need words of affirmation, you can't buy me a ring. You, you are going broke trying to buy somebody who would just feel better if you would just hug them. You up here trying to buy a big mansion to make her happy and all she wants is two hours out of your day. Let me talk to you black people. We tired of frying chicken to bury you. Now, you got all them purses and all that gold and all that hair and all them cars and all them rims and all them belt buckles, but then when it comes time to go to the dentist, you need a prayer meeting? You have no business with a Louis Vuitton purse and a cavity. I don't care what you say. Get the cavity fixed and then go get a Michael Kors. Do something with your life. Now, if you want a pastor, let me know. If you want me to just come up here and make you happy, we got to get a structure for our life. Some, some stuff you don't need to pray about, you just need a structure. I don't have to pray to pay my bills. I got a structure. 
I pray for stuff like, Lord, let my mama have long life. I pray, Lord, make sure these cars don't hit me when I'm on the road. Lord, make sure lightning don't strike the house. Lord, make sure I, I got my prayer set up for stuff that my structure can't handle. I'm tired of seeing women being ashamed of themselves. I'm tired of seeing women being body shamed. I'm tired of seeing women of being ashamed of their nose. If your nose big, breathe. If your hair is nappy, wear it natural. If you ain't curvy, then swing it, baby. You got to be who you are. And let me tell you something. Don't nobody want who you pretend to be. There's somebody that like it just like you got it. They like the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you swing it. Just slap yourself and say, be you, baby. You and your stretch marks, you and your depression, you and your attitude there is a good work that's about to happen in you and there's somebody who likes it just like you got Shani and I were in the convention center it was 10,000 people every step we took somebody wanted to take a picture and we kept going and we kept going and somebody said I was watching you and you all did not refuse a person I said you don't spend your whole life doing things where people recognize you only to turn your nose up when they do one of the worst kinds of people is the people who builds their lives off of people and then don't want to deal with people after the people have helped them get where they want to be. The way you handle people will determine how God handles you. Never waste your time trying to explain yourself to a person who's committed to misunderstanding you. Stop trying to explain yourself to somebody who is committed to misunderstanding you. No matter how clear you are, they are going to still leave muddy. No matter how many times you say you're sorry, they're going to still leave with an attitude. So instead of giving them speech, do what Jesus did on the cross and never say a mumbling. Sometimes healing comes before apology. And anybody here who need an apology to heal, you're going to be lame for 38 years. When you say sorry, I'll get over it. No, I'm going to get over it. If you never say sorry, I'm already over it. If you say sorry, it'll increase the trust. But I'm not going to wait on you to make me whole. This ought to be helping some married couples in here. This ought to be helping... This ought to be helping some parental to child relationships in here. And perhaps the person that you need to be having this conversation is not in this room or online, but you can be whole. Or are you so in love with what hurts you, you can't release it? Did anybody see that video? A little girl who came out of the blocks and ran out of her shoe. Went back and put the shoe on. And still run one race. God put so much in you that you can be stopped, blocked, obstructed, and still win. If I can take that race and analogize it to God, he just made sure that there was nobody on the track that could beat her. So when you're running your race in life, just know that there's nobody on the track that can defeat you. God told me to tell you, you're about to get the whole thing this year. I'm not about to have a good season this year. Don't come to me talking about it's just your season. No, it's my time. Wherever I go, it's going to be mine. Whatever I touch, it's going to be mine. Wherever my foot shall tread, it's going to be mine. This is my year to get rid of all of my, not my debt, not just some of it. This is my year to have all of what God, anybody want all that God. And he told me to tell you, this is the lowest you'll ever be. This is the brokest I'm ever gonna be in my life. This is the loneliest I will ever be in my life. It is up from here. I wish I had about 500 people who would just get in the service right now and say, it's up from here. I'm going up in my finances. I'm going up in my courage. I'm going up in my business. As a matter of fact, you are about to go so up, it's about to fall off on the people in your room because this is the lowest season you will ever have in your when you are the blessing, they don't miss you until you're gone. Oh God, I, I, I wish I had somebody in here today. When you are really a blessing to somebody's life, they can act like they don't like you. They can act like they don't need you. They can act like you're insignificant, but what they don't understand is there is a cost to losing me.
Oh, I dare you shout, there's a cost to losing me. Yes, I got a bad attitude and I got a bad temper, but baby, I got some anointing on my life. And, and when I'm in your life, everything marked. Do I have any anointed people in here saying, I'm not perfect, but you mess around and lose me, you're going to lose something. Because what you didn't see is when I was in the bathroom, I was praying for you. What you didn't know is when I was washing dishes, I was interceding for you. What you didn't know is I was saying, God, don't let them get in a car accident. You've been rebuking devils. Do I have any anointed people? I'm not perfect, but you're going to lose something if you lose me. Well, come on, let's give the Lord some praise in the house. On this evening, come on and stand up around the building with me. And if you just have enough energy in you, come on and lift your voice. Let the Lord know that you're excited to be in the house of the Lord on this evening. We'll come to a celebration. Hallelujah, God. Listen, to all of you who are watching us by way online, we just want to welcome you into the Lighthouse Celebration. This is 27 years of ministry by Pastor Keon Henderson. Come on, that ought to be something to be excited about. That's something to be excited about. Yes, yes, yes. But listen, today, even though we're doing 27 years of ministry, we want to make sure that you know that this is a celebration. And you, don't, don't you hesitate to put your hands together. If there's anything on your mind, this is the time to get it off. If there's anything on your heart, we're going to shake it off, praise it off. We're going to run it off because this is time for the Lord to have his way. Yes, yes. Listen, listen, listen. I want to bring a word of prayer for you because this, we're about to get crazy in here. We're about to blow the roof off of this building. We're about to cut the lights off. We're about to have an amazing time. We're about to move roads out the way. People going to be slain in the spirit. Got to be running around. I'm about to lose my mind for 27 years of celebration. Look to your left, look to your right and say, did you come to worship the Lord with me? I came to let the Lord know it's time to get it on. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to say thank you for the opportunity, God, just to come into your house of worship. We thank you for 27 years of ministry, 27 years of proclaiming your name high and lifted up. So God, we thank you, God, that all things are well on tonight. The enemy will not have any victory here. God, we're coming in ready to take the atmosphere by control. We're ready to lift the building up to you, God, for you're worthy to be praised. So, God, we thank you that every song that will be sung will be powerful. God, every word that will be spoken will be powerful. And every worship and praise that will be lifted up to you, God, will take the roof off. So, God, we thank you. We say that we love you, God. Glory to your highest. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. To my little big brother, Pastor Keon Henderson, I want to salute and celebrate you for an amazing odyssey of ministry. I want to go from a different vantage point on this, your anniversary. I want to thank God for all of the opportunities that didn't work. I'm thankful unto God that you had to leave Michigan. I'm appreciative that things didn't work out for the church you were promised. And I salute every dimension of heaven that you modeled for the world that when doors are shut, elevators are getting ready to open. Prophetically, you named this ministry Lighthouse which suggests those that are lost at sea, if they follow the light, they'll come into safe harbor. Thank you for being an unwavering witness to this generation that it will not always go our way, but all things work together for good. Lighthouse, you are better than the Red Roof Inn because they're closed, but your lights are still on. The best is yet to come, even when it doesn't look like it's going to work out. Happy anniversary to you. Praise the Lord, Lighthouse. I need you up on your feet. Oh, magnify the Lord with us and let us, what, exalt his name together. Anybody excited to be in the house of the Lord on today? Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord on tonight? Well, if you love Jesus, I need you to show some sign. If God has been good to you, I need you opening up your mouth and blessing the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. We serve an excellent God. He's worthy of the praise, worthy of the glory. Hey, everybody.
everybody put your hands together like this. Come on. Come on. Let me see you clap your hands. Hey.
and open up your mouths. Don't stop right there. I dare you to open up your mouths and begin to give God the best praise that you have. Don't look at me like I'm crazy, because the fact of the matter is, He deserves all of the praise. I said, don't y'all look at us like we crazy up here. The fact of the matter is, is that He deserves all the praise, the glory, the honor, it all belongs. Come to play church tonight. We came to give him all he deserved. Open up your mouth. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. If that was for me, that would be amazing. I said, open up your mouth for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Y'all don't make me work too hard. Y'all start lifting your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands. Start talking to him. Tell him how much he deserves everything. Everything, everything. Yeah. Come on, loop that again. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands. Yeah. Here we go, y'all. If you know it, sing it with us. My hallelujah belongs to you. Yeah. Come on, say. My hallelujah belongs to Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, my heart belongs, yeah, to you. Y'all sound real good. Come on, sing my heart. Yes, Lord. The next part says this, listen. Yes, you deserve it. 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 Come on, y'all, see my.
that he deserves. Come on, let's give him the praise that he deserves. Not that you deserve, but that he deserves. Don't just sing about it. Let's be about it. We don't just sing about it, but we are. Come on, we're about it. Give him the praise that he deserves. You deserve it, Jesus. You deserve my hallelujah. You deserve my thank you, Jesus. You deserve you are worthy. You deserve you are awesome. You deserve an incredible God deserves Hello, this is Mayor Sylvester Turner congratulating Pastor Keon Henderson on his 27th pastoral anniversary. For 27 years, Pastor Henderson has delivered guidance and direction to more than 10,000 members of the Lighthouse Church and continues the work of leading disaster initiatives and support for the community. Under his leadership, the Lighthouse Church has flourished and remained deeply dedicated to the spiritual needs of its members. In addition to his role as pastor, Pastor Henderson is also a global entrepreneur who is passionate about developing leaders, organizations, and teams for optimal success. He is founder of the annual L3, 
Lift, Lead, and Learn Conference, and Business Lab, a global coaching and accelerator program for entrepreneurs, corporate, and ministry leaders. Pastor Henderson has received numerous awards and commendations from local, state, and government officials for his humanitarian work in providing relief and serving over 200,000 meals to those in need. On behalf of the city of Houston, I congratulate and commend Pastor Henderson for 27 years of dedicated and committed service. Pastor Henderson, as you continue your journey of global impact, be assured that your participation in the gospel will be valued for a lifetime. Congratulations once again, and may God bless you. It is a distinct honor and privilege to be included in this celebration as we reminisce over the last 27 years of Pastor Keon Henderson's ministry. To understand that God who hath began a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. That he is Alpha and Omega, that he is the beginning and the end has been proven in the process of your life. Withstanding seasons and stresses and traumas and demands and all that goes into being who you are and yet standing up there and doing it with a grace that would make the observer think that it is easy. It is anything but. Yet when God has graced you as he has you, uh, you make difficult things seem less tumultuous. On this momentous occasion, we salute you. You have garnered the respect of your elders and gathered the respect of your sons as you have continued to lead your congregation in the spirit of excellence. I am deeply honored as a spiritual father to watch you go through the winter, spring, summer, and fall of life and watch God do new and fresh things in you, though you are still quite young. You have garnered quite a testimony, a tribute to the authenticity of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God that is upon your life has been proven. Like David's rock, you have been proven in the process you are not Saul's armor. You are your own individual. Keep on keeping on. May God grant you another 27 years of excellence in service to our King. Great grace to you, to your church, to your lovely bride, to your family. We love you. Congratulations, son. So proud. Keep moving. Come on, let's give it up. Come on, let's give it up. Come on, all over the building, let's give God praise. Holly, come on. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Come on. Let's give God glory for such a great man of God that we all love. Come on, you all. Put your hand together for him. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, come on. We ought to be hollering. It's enough of us to hear. Come on, give God praise for Pastor Keon Henderson. Come on. Hallelujah. What a glorious God. While you're standing, put your hand together for his lovely wife. We're so blessed. Come on. His help me, the one that is called alongside of him to assist him in the great work that God has put in the both of their hands. Put your hand together again for the Henderson, my brother and my sister. I love you so much. You may be seated. I'm so blessed for Bishop Jakes, the words that he just gave us a moment ago about Pastor Keon Henderson. I know you love him as much, as much as I love him. I thank him so much for just allowing me to be a part of his life and to be up close to see all that God is doing in his life. You know, the scripture says again that in the last day that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, his sons and daughters will prophesy, old men will dream dreams, and young men will see visions. And when you look at a Pastor Keon, Keon is nothing but a visionaire. I dare somebody just shout because you're sitting in a spoken vision right now. Come on, give God a praise. You're sitting in a spoken vision right now. Come on, you need to give him another praise because you and I are, we are sitting in a spoken vision. We're sitting in a spoken vision. He had to speak it. He had to decree it. He had to declare it. He 
had to confess it. And we all are a part. We really are. We are a part. We are a part of what his ear is hearing from God. And I am so blessed. I'm happy. I'm excited to be here. Now I want to do two things because I want to be a blessing to the man of God and, and the work that God has put in his hand and the ministry that God has given unto him in the earth. Many of us, I know personally, I wanted to personally bless him, but his heart is so open and his heart is so open because he has something that I feel like all visionaries has. That is, again, an insight of community the need of community, all that it takes. He said, look, it's not even about me. It's not about me. I just have a vision. I have a vision for community, and I want to see people's lives better, young people's lives better. And so tonight, we want to be a blessing. Now, there is something that I heard before I even came out tonight. Luke 16 and 12 It's a particular verse of Scripture that I love so much when it comes down to men like a Pastor Keon Henderson. Luke 16 and 12, and they might put it up on the screen, but it says, again, if you have not been faithful in that which is another, who will give you that which is your own? Can I say that again? And I want you to take this because we are, we are a part of such a man with vision. And we push his vision. And if we push his vision... And how many vision, how many people in here tonight really got vision? You got vision. Come on. You got vision. You got vision. You have vision. You personally have vision. I've learned in my personal life, seriously, I've learned in my personal life, especially when we honor a person, a man like him, who have already served 27 years in ministry. Come on, you all. That's, some, that, that's not 27 days and that's not 27 months. I need 20 people or 27 people that will get radical right quick and know what it's like to carry a vision for 27 years, for 27 years. And listen, I have watched him, I've traveled around with him, and I've watched him support and push other people's visions. I've watched him do that. I've watched him give into other men and other women's vision. I've watched that. So tonight will be a great opportunity for everyone that's in here tonight. This will be a great opportunity for everyone in here tonight. Now, he has this take action now. And it's a nonprofit that is geared towards low income and education and recreation and housing. Now, when I thought about all of that, that all, all he's thinking about is low income, education, and housing. How he can push and help people's lives. Now, I have another scripture, but I want you to just keep those two script, that one scripture, but I have another scripture that it says in Galatians 6 and 6. It says to all of these, again, let them who has taught the word of God share in all things with the one who teaches you. Come on, somebody. See, if your life, I need somebody in this church, if your life is better as a result of the teaching of Pastor Keon Emerson, let me hear you holler in here. Let me hear you holler here. Thank you. Let me hear you holler here. 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 here. That my life, my community, thank you, is better as a result of Pastor Keon Henderson. Now, this is what I did personally, so I don't want to hold the time no longer. But this is what I did personally. I personally had to do this here. This is Mark personally. Now, anyone else, you can join me if you so desire. But this is Mark personally. I had to sow personally into his life. And that, because it's 27, I wanted everything to revolve around 27 with me. So I wanted to sow a $2,700 seed into his life and his ministry. Not that he needed. Y'all miss what I'm about to say. Not that he needed and not that he asked for it. But Genesis chapter 12 says, I'll bless those who bless you. He said, I bless those who bless you. So me sowing into him personally, it was not about him, but it was about me. And so after I knew all about all the other things that he wanted to do, I had to sow into his great nonprofit organization because I know that it is a blessing. This is what I want you to do. I want every believer in here tonight, every believer in here tonight that can and will, I want you to sow a seed into this nonprofit. Take action now. You can make the check payable out to take action now. 
if you so desire, I would like for you to sow at least $270 and put it on there his 27th year. Thank you. Someone is in agreement over here already. I like that. You're in agreement. You're in agreement with that already. So if you so desire, I want you to just go ahead and stand. Stand real quickly. Stand real quickly. Thank you. There we go. Stand real quickly. Those that desire to sow that seed of $270. Come on, stand real quickly. Stand real quickly. Stand real quickly. Stand real quickly. There we go. All over the, all over the building. That's right. And so, and, and, and make that check pay up again out to take action now. Take action now. Oh, all in the back. Thank you. Thank you. All around. There we go. Thank you. 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 I believe this. That's why I gave you that scripture, Luke 16 and 12. I believe in pushing others' visions. I really do. I believe that more than anything. I believe in pushing others' vision. There's a word tonight, and I know that word we're going to hear tonight is going to confirm so much. I just believe that like never before. I believe it like never before. As you give, thank you for still standing. That's right, still standing. We're going to push and we're going to support this vision and everything that he's in great faith for. I know it's already done. Somebody just act like, shout out loud, it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Thank you. Now the rest, everyone else, I want you to get the greatest seed that you can and I want you to make sure if you so desire, you want to write your seed out to Pastor Keon Hennis to do so. If you so desire to write it out to take action now, do so. But I want you to make sure when you write your seed out, you are in such great faith for all that God has and all that God is doing in this great man of God's life. Everyone stand to your feet with your seed. Everyone say thank you all over. There we go. Everyone standing to your feet. Everyone standing to your feet. Everyone standing to your feet. Hallelujah. I've always believed that the seed that leave my hand, it never leaves my life. I just believe it. And I don't know about some of you all, but just planting seeds into his life and his ministry, I have a spirit of expectation. Come on, somebody. Thank you back there. I have a spirit of expectation that something and God is getting involved in my seed that I am sowing into the work that God put in his hand. Lift those seeds up, if you will. Lift those seeds up. Lift those seeds up. All that you have. Lift those seeds up. Many have already sown. I can see it. Thank you. Thank you. Lift those seeds up. Father, we thank you for the seed that you have allowed us to give into your kingdom tonight. We thank you for this great visionary God that you have given unto us. We thank you, Lord, because we know that he walked by faith and not by sight. And now I thank you for someone releasing their faith tonight. I thank you for some pastor. I thank you for some entrepreneur. I thank you for some business person tonight saying that I will continually to push the man of God's vision. Thank you for all that he has done. Thank you for that all that he is doing in my personal life, my personal development, my personal growth. Let the rest of his life, God, God, let the rest of his life, let the rest of everything he put his hand on come to pass. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise, if you will. If you will pass your offerings to my left, amen, and the ushers will take it, amen, from here, amen. Pass those offerings all the way down. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another hand praise. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Trying to figure out what to do with this um, hand towel because um, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, my pants were a little tighter than what I thought it was going to be and I want to bend down too many times to pick that up. Yeah, yeah, I am so honored. I'm so glad to be a part of this amazing celebration. I know you guys are giving, but if you're not giving right now, can you clap your hands and make some noise for Pastor 
Keon and Pastor Shani. Can we just make some noise for your amazing pastors? 27 years. Some people can't do stuff for 27 days. And to come through 27 years of the enemy trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And to be here and not be bitter and be happy. And to still have a passion to serve God's people is an amazing feat. We honor you, man of God. Grateful for you. I'm glad to be here. Houston, I'm glad to be in the building. Glad to be in the building. Listen, um, I want to, because it's... Because it's his anniversary, 27 years. I want to do a new, can I do a new song? That was weak. That was, I'm doing, we're doing all old stuff. Everything. Oh. Can, can I do a new, if I do a new song, will y'all rock with me and just act like you heard it before and sing it loud and with passion and conviction? I got a new song that's going to be on my record in a few months. But this song, I believe we can, we can just start the night out and just go bananas. This song is called Feel the Room. Now, now listen, I'm not going to ask you if God has been good to you, jump on your feet. No, no. Because the fact that you're in this room right now is a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. But what I'm going to say is because God has been good to you, can you jump on your feet all over this room? Even if you're watching online, get off the couch. It's time to lift up an amazing Savior and his name is Jesus. If you come to lift up Jesus, open up your mouths and shout in this room. This song is called Feel the Room. I need y'all to clap. Come on, keep it like this. Clap those hands like you're sanctified right here. Everybody clap your hands. Turn that track up loud in the house. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three. Everybody move. Come on, clap it up, y'all. Freedom is in this room tonight. And God, we thank you for freedom. It's a real simple song. It goes like this, y'all. There is a sound, a sound from heaven that changes everything. I am free. No fear is holding me. Nothing can stop my praise. Yeah. Oh, 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 we were made for freedom. Jesus has redeemed us, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 sing it out together. Freedom reigns forever and ever. Let freedom fill the room. Ah, those hands, y'all. Hey, Father, we thank you for freedom tonight. Hey, let freedom fill the room. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Come on, Taylor, let's go. Let's raise it like a big church choir right here. Come on. Change the
something grip your life in a way that the devil told you you'll never be free from that that there's no way God can get you out of that kind of bondage your mama suffered from it your daddy died from it and there's no way that you will ever be free from it but are there at least 27 people in the room that can say Todd I know how it feels to say whom the son said whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed freedom has a sound can you release that sound in this room tonight open up your mouth and shout for freedom tonight freedom is in the room and freedom has a name and his name is Jesus Jesus is in the room tonight and we thank him we bless him we give him the glory because it's Jesus who breaks every chain and he doesn't do it because we're good. He does it because he's good. Is anybody grateful that he didn't wait on you to be good before he was good to you? But when you were ratchet and nasty, he was still good. When you were coming out of hotel rooms, you had no business. He was still good. Somebody ought to praise him for his goodness towards you. And if he's been better than good, come on and shout in this room. Come on, I need y'all to raise this with us. Everybody clap your hands. Let's go. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And no matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Now, if you got breath in your body, I need you to clap those hands. Let's sound like a big mass choir tonight. Come on, every voice. Say, I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. Say, and his praises shall continually be. No matter what I see. Thank you, God. Say, as long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing, oh, magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt, yeah. Let us exalt this is why we're here tonight. Come on, come on, let's lay down our crowns. We humble ourselves tonight, Jesus. Tonight we come to do it together. Look at somebody on your row and say, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Clap those hands. Come on. I need to hear y'all over here. 
I need y'all to raise it to the King of Kings tonight. Let's go. So I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. Say and this praise is. God knows I've seen a lot of things, but as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, so as long as I'm breathing, thank you, Father, oh magnify, let us exalt the amazing name of Jesus, let's lay down our vows, we let go of our titles, and we lift up the name that only matters tonight. And that name is Jesus. Tell somebody, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it one more time, y'all. Lift those hands. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify the Lord. Let us exalt you. Yeah. Let's do it together. Father, we lay down our crowns. And we lift up your name. Let's do it together. Say, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Tell somebody sitting beside you tonight. Tell them, so let's do it again. Let's do it again. Oh, magnify the Lord with me tonight. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. If he's been good, I need you to help me testify right here. Somebody say, you've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good to you've me. Than good to I me. need somebody with a testimony. So you've been better than good to you've me. Than good to when me. I thought it was over, you were better than good to you've me. Been better than good to me. Let's make it real big right here. So you've been better than good you've to me. Good to when me. I thought it was over, you were better than good you've to me. Than good when to the me. enemy came in like a flood, you were. Testify, I should have been dead. I should have been dead. That's what you better than good to me. And I should have lost my mind. I should have lost my mind. Said I should have went crazy. You better than good to me. Has he been good to anybody tonight? Say it again. I should have been dead. I should have been dead. Should have been six feet in the grave. But you told death to stand back and behave. Yeah, I should have lost my mind. Should have lost my mind. You were better than good to me. Father, we're grateful for your goodness. Come on, let's go. Everybody tell them you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me.
taste it and see that the Lord is good. That's why I'm shouting is because I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've experienced it in my own life. He's been good. So as long as I'm breathing Oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Yeah, 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 yes Said as long as I'm breathing Yeah Oh yes I'm breathing This will be my response tonight I'll bless the Lord There may be some people in the room that may not be breathing tonight, but I said, as long as I'm breathing, oh, yes, I'm breathing, this will be my response to your goodness. I bless the Lord. I know I shouldn't be here right now. That's why my hands can't go down. I know I shouldn't be in this room. So as long as I'm breathing, Yes, I'm breathing. This will be my response. I'll bless the Lord. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Let's lay down. Now, crowns and lift. Stay right there. Let's lay down. It's a sign of humility. And lift. I'll lay down my title tonight. Let's lay. And we lift up your own. So we lay down our crowns. And lift up. Let's do it together. Look at somebody and tell them, let's do it together. What you waiting for? What you waiting for? Come on, what you waiting for? What, what are you waiting for? Let's do it together. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify. Oh, make him bigger. Make him bigger. Make him bigger. I know what you're going through is big, but make him bigger. I know what you're facing is big, but make him bigger. I know the sickness is big, but make him bigger. I know the storyline is huge, but make him bigger. Make him bigger. Make him bigger. I, I'm crazy enough. We got one more song. I'm crazy enough to believe that as we are here to celebrate a feat that should definitely be celebrated but I would be naive not to believe that there is something that God wants to accomplish tonight that he didn't just assemble us here together tonight to make us feel good and to yell and, and shout um, happy anniversary um, but I believe that there is something that God wants to do in you tonight that if you would just lean into this moment because I just don't want to come to church and have goosebumps and tears because I don't need goosebumps and tears on Monday I need, I need a resurrected savior to fix some stuff I can't fix on my own to heal some stuff that, that chemo can't heal I need, I need a savior I, I don't need a good time I can go on the golf course and get a good time but if I'm in the room and he's in the room then I just believe that there's something I feel the Holy Ghost that he wants to accomplish and is there anybody in this room that's saying God I need more than a good time I need an encounter with you tonight I need an encounter God I need a real encounter with you tonight I need you to do what doctors can't do do what therapists can't do do what my family can't do tonight give us new wine give us new wine tonight Jesus give us new wine give us new wine anybody ready for something new lift those hands in this room hallelujah 
I feel the presence of God in this place. God, do something fresh tonight. Give us a new manner. Give us a new manner. Come on, talk to him like you know he can hear you. Give us a new manner. Give us a new manner. Give us a new manner. Whatever it takes. If I got to walk off in the corner by myself. If I got to get on my knees at my seat. If I got to come to the altar. Whatever it takes. God, I'm ready for something fresh. I'm ready for something new. I give you permission tonight. Father, we wave the white flag in your presence. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new eyes. And in the soil, I, I surrender, because you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you into your careful hand. Cause when I trust you, I don't need to understand. So just make me a vessel. Yeah. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing. But all you have given me, Jesus, bring me wine out of me. Lift those hands if you're ready tonight. Come on. Oh, no. You can do it in me. Do it in us tonight. Give us new wine, Jesus. Oh. So in the crushing and in the pressing you are making new wine. And in the soil I, I surrender Cause you are breaking new ground Come on, say, so I yield Come on, we just humble ourselves tonight Because when I trust you, I don't have to understand We don't need all of the details when we know that you're in control So raise your voice and say, God, make me a vessel Come on, church, say, make me an offering. Say, make me whatever you want me to be. And, uh, say, God, I came here with nothing. But everything I have is because of you. Somebody say, Jesus, bring new wine. Out of me. Say, Jesus, bring new wine. Yes, God, out of me. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Listen, because where there is new wine, there is new power. Where there is freedom, the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flame to carry your new fire today. Anybody want new fire tonight? Let's raise that together. Where there is new wine. There is new power. There is new power. Oh. There is new the kingdom of the Lord is here. Jesus. So I lay down my old flame to carry on. We want new fire tonight. Somebody lift those hands one more time with us and say, Say, where there is new wine, there is new power. The Spirit of the Lord is here So I lay down my own friend To carry your new fire today Give us new fire Give us new fire So just make me a vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be. Cause God, I came here with nothing. Yeah. 
but all you have given me. So Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Come on, raise that. Say, Jesus. Jesus, bring new I feel God in this room right here. I need you to sing it as a prayer. Say, Jesus, bring new wine. Jesus, bring new wine. Out I wanna be new. I wanna be just like you. Oh, Jesus, bring new wine. I wanna be new, God. I wanna be just like you. Somebody throw your hands up and say, Jesus, bring new wine. I wanna be new, God. Oh, oh, my Lord, I want to be I want to be new. I be just like you. Somebody say, bring the one. Jesus, bring the one. How to be. Say, Jesus, bring the one. Jesus, bring the one. Somebody sing it to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, bring the every habit she every struggle every generational curse God I pray cause I wanna be I wanna be I know it's an anniversary tonight but I got some issues and, and I wanna be new God go down on the inside of me and do what I need you to do God Jesus God I'm ready God I'm ready God I'm ready cause I wanna be I wanna be I wanna be just like you we gotta go so Jesus bring Say yes, Lord, yes, yeah. to your will and to your way. And I'll say, yes. I wish my mama was here, Lord, yeah, mom. I will trust you and obey. Here it is, come on, and when you're. Oh, uh, this will be my response. Come on. And with my whole heart, oh, let's make it real big right here. Every voice. And my Facebook is saying, I 
know what television is saying, but in my head, so will be yes. Yes, Lord. I gotta sit down. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, everything that's within me says, Yes, Lord. Completely. Yes. Somebody throw your hands up and say, my soul says yes Lord in the good times yes Lord when my heart is broken yes Lord when I get bad news yes Lord from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul Somebody throw your hands up and say, Yes, Lord. Completely. Come on. My soul. You got 30 seconds, kid. I need you to let yes fill this room right now. I said, Let yes fill this room right now. I said, let yes fill this room right now. Let yes fill this room right now. Right in your living room, let yes fill it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everything within me says yes. Yes, what I don't understand. Yes, when I'm confused. Yes, when I'm overwhelmed. Somebody throw your hands up and shout. All praise to God, my pastor, preachers, members, and guests. It is indeed a privilege and an honor to be able to share a word from God with you. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark, 4th chapter, 35th verse. So here we are at the end of another Hope for Harvey event. Thousands of people have come out. Thousands of people have been served. Jesus slept as the storm frightened his disciples. At this point, their faith appeared weak. Here's where most of us stand today, weak in faith. We beat our heads against brick walls, worrying about the storms that come in our lives. If you had the conviction of faith, you would not at any time doubt God, because you would know that he would fix it. I don't know who I'm talking to in the lighthouse, but in the next year, you're gonna be forgiven, rich, and have some help. Just as some of us, no matter what God has done for us in our lives or what he has brought us through, when the storms come, we question God and ask, why me? If he has brought you this far, what makes you think he's brought you this far to just leave you alone? Uh, the idea and the vision of the church came from an idea. I was looking at a lighthouse. It was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The waves were big. Uh, the water was splashing against the lighthouse. And there was a guy standing in the lighthouse with his hands in his pocket. And it, immediately at that time, God began to speak to me. He said that I could use the word to allow people to be in a storm and still be calm at the same time. I ask you today, why are you so fearful? You're not afraid when you go to the nightclub. You're not afraid when you go to the riverboat and lose all your money. You're not afraid when you sat in that seat and thought it would hold you up. You are not afraid when you met someone one day and in the bed with them the next day. You are not afraid. This church that we're in right now, 
And there's only a few people he can tell you, and I know the Stroders there sitting right there, they were with me with the first church that I started in Indiana, and they can tell you that 15 years ago, when I drew a building on paper, I drew this exact building before I ever saw it. If you have the conviction of faith, you will walk by faith as any. Move by faith as Noah. Worship by faith as Abel. Live by faith as Abraham. Conceive by faith as Sarah. Govern by faith as Moses. Fight by faith as Joshua. Conquer by faith as Gideon. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Because if you walk by faith, you will know that he died. One Friday, but early. One Sunday morning, he got up out of grave with all power. Wow. <laughs> I'll start this the same way I started it in 1995 on this exact Sunday. First, giving all praises and glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ giving honor to all of the ministers, uh, pastors, and preachers. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Let me ask you a question. Has God done anything for you today that nobody could have done even if they tried? If our God has been that kind of good to you, somebody shout hallelujah. I follow that up by saying if our God were a small God, small praise would be all right. If our God were an average God, then average praise would suffice. But the Bible says our God is great, and so he deserves great praise. Let me ask you again, has God done anything for you today that nobody could have done even if they tried? If he has, somebody lift your voice and praise him in this place. So obviously, you know, I'm not Dr. Matthew Stevenson, and uh, he was coming. Um, many of you probably saw it online. His wife, noticing that he was exhausted, put him on a forced sabbatical. Um, He's starting churches all over the place, was exhausted, couldn't make it, and I was looking for somebody to fill in. Uh, but this would have been the first time in the history of my life that I didn't preach an anniversary. And the Lord said... <laughs> You're going to do it again. So you don't have him. All you got is me. And if you're disappointed, I'm sorry. But this is all I got. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Text. Save some of those for later. Save some of those. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring the word today, and um, I was supposed to be on vacation this month, but uh, this is my party. And I can come if I want to. Come and preach right here. I am want to just thank a few people who are here today uh, before we get going. And first of all, I want to start uh, by thanking those of you all who contributed. Let me explain what, what Take Action is just real quickly. Let me get all this out of the way so we can just let the Holy Ghost wreck this place and we'll be done. I, normally, on days like this, they, they take offerings and, and they showed me an envelope where, you know, I was to give that envelope to you and you were going to give... Um, but I'm in a season of my life right now that I'm recognizing that 
the best way to acquire your dreams is to be the gift and not receive them? And so I started this organization called Take Action. And Take Action is our midweek Bible study. You've seen me, but it's really bigger than that. What I'm doing at this stage of my life is I'm looking for ways to be impactful. And when Shani and I got married in Anguilla, I saw this piece of property that just had rocks and, and, and uh, stray dogs and barbed wire fences. It was a dilapidated piece of land, and we were driving past it, and I was driving, and over there you drive on the left side. And, and so I passed by the street that I was supposed to turn on, and as I was turning on that street, the person who was guiding us said, don't worry about it, go to the next street, and you can take a right. So I passed my exit, went to the next street, took a right and another right, and on that corner of this park that was dilapidated was a store called Lighthouse Market. You saw it, Will. I, this is a true story. And so here's this piece of property that the Lord put on my heart and my wife to develop, and it was called Lighthouse Market, and it was there the Lord uh, struck this because even though it's pristine and it has beautiful scenery, how many of y'all been to those places that outside of the resort, come on, talk to me, outside of the resort where the people actually live, those dollars are not invested. And so what I'm going to do with all of you all online and those of you all who will give uh, throughout this message, I'm going to use whatever we raise today to build a park in that community for all of those young people uh, that I saw playing barefoot in rocks and stepping over barbed wire fences and running from dogs. And I'm going to use everything that we do today, my wife and I, to build a park. And it's going to be the Lighthouse Park. It's going to be Lighthouse Park. And let me tell you this. We just recently uh, went on a uh, vacation for our honeymoon, and I took a picture Everywhere we went, there was a lighthouse. I've got about 13 pictures of lighthouses. Y'all can mute everybody else's mic. You only need this one. So everybody else's uh, lighthouses everywhere, and, and I took a picture of them, and the Lord told me that there is no place that there isn't a lighthouse. And a lighthouse is a significant thing. It's, it's the way that you see that you're headed in the right direction. And so we're not just going to build lighthouses um, churches. We're going to build an organization, uh, whether it's parks, whether it's senior living facilities, wh wh whatever it is, we're going to just put lighthouse things everywhere across this globe. And as you give today, um, the best gift you can do for me is to help me to build that for the people of that community. And that's the first initiative, uh, but we've got many more to go. I also want to thank some people in here. I want to first start out by thanking Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Mercer. Just stand when I call your name and just wave. Guys, if it were not for these people, we wouldn't be here. When every bank told us no, this bank told us yes. So you need to praise God for Debbie and Bruce Mercer. We got turned down 12 times. Not only did they say yes, when we poured the foundation on this building, he was there with me at 5 o'clock in the morning. We were freezing cold with, with our nose running, but he stood here with me for hours until the sun came up because he's a vested interest. And I want to tell you, I love you and I thank you so much for believing in us when nobody else did. I want you to praise God for Mr. and Mrs. Harold Hatchett. Praise, praise God for them. Just clap for them as I say their name. Mr. and Mrs. Udo Mendez. Laron Christopher, good to see you, my brother. Listen, these are two people who mean the world to me. Uh, this, this man is about 80, 81 years young. He can outdo every one of you in here. I guarantee you, you'll fall asleep before he will. He shuts down every party. The last person to leave, uh, Mr. Gardner and Ms. Mia Parker, just stand real quick so they can see you. God bless you. I love you, man. This is my wise counselor. He's one of the most brilliant men I've ever met. Uh, this, this man keeps me out of trouble and makes sure can't nobody get to me. This is my lawyer. Y'all praise God for Mr. Ben Hall. Stand up. That's my bulldog, my pit bull. <laughs> you mess with me, you messing with him, and you don't want to mess with him. 
I can promise you that. Uh, I want to praise God. Uh, she has representation here, but Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and her staff. Um, and to the man who towed his house down uh, on Sunday, y'all praise God for Bishop Sion Roberts, my cousin. Prophesying, new pastor of the Lighthouse Pearland. <laughs> Praise God for the pastor of our West Campus, Pastor Hammond and his wife Marcia, Pastor Rama and Stephanie, South Campus, and the assistant pastor of this church, Pastor Torrance Moore, who just preached the paints off the wall at the West Campus. Uh, Vin Shaw, you done snuck in here, man. I, I don't know how you did that, but you done snuck all the way from Dallas. Keith, good to see you, my brother. And uh, the newly, the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Antar Muhammad. Y'all praise God for Antar and his wife, Leslie. <laughs> to my family, but I, I gotta say this, um, you know, I heard Pastor Torrance talking about his wife was his chocolate thunder and all this stuff this morning. I heard you, you didn't think I was watching, but I watched you. Yeah, I was wondering if you was having church or you was having flashbacks. <laughs> A little bit of both, it's legal. But I get to say now, thank God, period, for my wife. She is an incredible woman. Stand up, baby. I want, I want you to thank God for my wife. She is amazing. She is amazing. Um, in the words of Marvin Sapp, I never would have made it without you. And I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your intelligence. I thank you for your grace. And you fine as I don't know what. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, now I see what you was going through. I got it. Just hit me. Just hit me. If I missed you, please charge it to my head, not my heart. Uh, many of you know uh, these, these, this couple, they mean so much to me. Uh, and he didn't have to do it, but he came all the way. Would you praise God for Mr. and Mrs. Mark Baker? Thank you so much. We praise God for them. To everybody else, if I miss you, I just can't see you. The lights are in my face. I'm calling your names the best I can. But um, it's been 27 years. It's been 27 years, and you don't make it this far by yourself. Um, to anybody who's a leader, you know that if you are a man, you call yourself a leader, you're a woman, and you call yourself a leader, and you look up, and nobody's behind you. You're just a person taking a walk. Thank you, Lighthouse. Thank you for those of y'all who are watching online. Thank you from all of our campuses, from the bottom of my heart. I am not a leader because I lead. I'm a leader because you made me one. And I appreciate you so much for your tenacity and your patience. For many of you, when I got here, I was in my 20s. I know it, and now I ain't no more. But I ain't tired yet. I ain't tired yet. I've waited 27 years to preach this message tonight. And the Lord gave it to me. I've quoted this scripture, but I've never preached this text. And the Lord released me to preach it on tonight. And I guess sometimes you have to go through enough in order to be able to say something about particular things. I think, I think that some people are experts. I'd rather be experienced. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the 27th number of the Psalms. Psalms 27. If you don't mind, I know you've been doing it all day. Just stand out of respect for the reading of the Word of God. And let's bless God for Todd Galbraith, who is an amazing man of God and singer. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. We're going to begin at verse number one. Psalms 27, verse number one. If you got it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, hold up. All right. Psalms 27, verse number one. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked and I can say this after 27 years now even mine enemies and my foes came up on me to eat my flesh 
I can say after 27 years, they stumbled. Not or fell. They stumbled and fell. Though a host, I can say this after 27 years, should encamp around me. I want to say after 27 years, my heart shall not fear. And though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Number one, that I will seek. <laughs> that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble I can say this after 27 years he shall hide me he shall set me up on a rock last verse and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. After 27 years of preaching the gospel since I was 14 years old, God has blessed me. I've preached several countries and many times in Africa. Almost 10 times I've been there preaching. I've preached in England. I've been to Australia. I've preached in 42 out of the 50 states in the United States of America. I've preached on the island of St. Croix. I've preached all over the world. And after 27 years of preaching the gospel, after attacks and slander and lies, I've learned one thing. I'm only human. That's what I want to talk about today. Just look at your neighbor on your way down to your seat and say, neighbor, I know it don't look like it, but I'm only human. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I must admit, and it's been this way my whole life, I am addicted to old school music. I tried to give the young people a chance. They just can't hold my attention. I like them for a few months. Then I go right back to to the temptations. I go right back to the old J's. I go right back to Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. I'm going to start naming stuff that some of y'all don't know nothing about. Go right back to Sam Cooke. Even in church, I'll go back to, to the spiritual QCs. I'll, I'll go back to Shirley Caesar. I like, I like Todd. I do. I love Todd. Oh, but it's something about Shirley. Pastor Shirley Caesar. It's just, it's just in my bones. And I, and I think it's because my mom, when we were growing up, we had a rule uh, that we could not go outside on Saturday without cleaning up the house. And while we were cleaning up the house, B.B. King would be in the background talking about the thrill that's gone. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? Donnie Hathaway and Teddy P. It was all, it was all kind of of music playing in, in the house. And, and what did I learn to that music, the reason why it sticks with you? And, and those writers would tell you, Al Green would tell you that the reason why love and happiness is, is such a hit is because he actually experienced love and happiness. And somewhere along the line, Joe Simon wrote the song, The Choking Kind. Y'all don't know nothing about it. I know it. I know it. He told that girl, your hat, that hat don't fit my head, baby. Your love is the choking kind.
And when I play it, you should see Shawnee. When I turn on, this is what she do. I said, baby, you don't like my music. She said, yeah, but after eight songs in a row. It's just, it's in my soul. And the reason why I love it is because when I go back and study history, I found out that most of the songs that we sing today were born out of misery. Born out of pain. In a country where blacks were not allowed to drink from the same water fountain as other counterparts, and we were not able to buy homes in certain neighborhoods known as redlining and, and not able to get loans and, and, and our children were not able uh, to be educated at the same schools as others and, and, and women did not have rights. Marvin said, what's going on? Picket lines and, 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 and don't promise me yeah, he, 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 wrote, he wrote these songs when women uh, were, were trying to be liberated. Uh, Aretha said, just, just give us a little R. See, see you, you know it too. Just all, all I'm asking is just for a little respect. I know I don't make as much money as you, brother, but, but when I get home, I just want a little, a, a little, a, just, just a little respect. We, we, are, we are in tumultuous times, even, even, even now. And, and, and I realize that I love that music. It, it connects with, with my spirit. And, uh, but, but there is something about struggle that, that produces greatness. See, this is, if, if you're young and you're trying to figure out how to be successful, you're, you're not going to be successful just because you want to be. you got to struggle. Well, you got, you got to overcome some stuff. You, you, got to, you got to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You can't tweet about it. You got to go through it. You, you, you can't just post. You just can't post it. You got to actually go through it. Anybody ever been through anything in this place? Something about struggle that produces creativity, and it is not always easy because even when Jesus was nailed to the cross, and he was struggling, struggling under the pain and the pressure of the crucifixion. Uh, he, who had all power, said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? A scripture that we all know, born out of pain. When David wrote Psalms 23, he wasn't on vacation. When David wrote Psalms 23... He was on the run from either Absalom or either Saul. He was in the cave hiding, and that's when the pen began to be creative because something about struggle. When Todd wrote, Lord, you are good, he will tell you, he's told me the story of where he was when he didn't feel worthy, when he felt inadequate. It was something about struggle that produces strength. And I just want to talk to anybody in here who's struggling with anything right now. Be not weary in your well-doing, for in due season you will reap a harvest. Fist bump somebody and say, if you faint not. It isn't complicated. What you are doing right now and what you are going through right now will only do one of two things. It will either make you or it will break you. It ain't complicated. There is no gray area. It will either make you better or it will make you bitter. It is not complicated. What's complicated is the way you allow it to affect you. You got choices. You got choices. Judas went through a struggle. He hung himself. Peter struggled and preached Pentecost. It's, it's, just, it's just how you decide to handle it. Cain's offering was rejected. He became a murderer. Jesus was rejected. He became a king. It's up to you. Esau was rejected. He became bitter. Jacob was rejected and became a nation. It's up to you how you allow life and trouble and test to develop you and how you decide 
to either come out as gold plated or pure gold. Touch your neighbor and say it's up to you. This psalm was written by a man whose mind seemed to be scattered by his circumstance. Now, most of us, when we quote Psalms 27, we can quote verse 1 through 6 excellently because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When evil men come up against me to eat my flesh, they stumble and fail. We know all of that part, but most of us can't quote it from verse 7 on. Because the second part of the song is a reality check. He started talking about I'm crying and I'm hiding and my enemies are coming up against me and he doesn't know what to do. It's as if an eagle wrote verses one through six and a chicken stole the pen and wrote verses seven through 14. And if the truth be told, all of us have both in us. Sometimes we believe we can fly and sometimes we can't even find the strength to walk. Do I have anybody here that want to be honest today? Sometimes you feel full of faith and sometimes you are full of fear. Sometimes you feel like a great mother and then other times you wonder why you had them in the first place. Oh, you ain't gonna say amen in this place today. Sometimes you feel like a great father and then other times you feel insignificant. Sometimes you feel like a great coach and then other times you feel like you should resign. Sometimes you feel like you love ministry and sometimes you want to say, I ain't never going back to church. Sometimes you trust the Lord and sometimes you're wondering, where are you? Oh, y'all not going to say amen here today. I can say this after 27 years. And the problem with the church is, is we want to act like we're always full of faith. And we want to act like everything is good. And we want to act like every day is Sunday and every month is the month of May. But sometimes you want to ask the question, what in the hell am I doing here? Sometimes... You're glad you got a spouse, and sometimes you're wondering, why am I in this toxic relationship? Sometimes you want to be holy, and then sometimes your hormones got a mind of their own. Holler at your boy. Oh, y'all ain't going to say man. Just say ouch. Sometimes you're a social drinker. Other times you're almost an actor. Just because I have one, two, maybe two drinks every once in a while, and I'm an alcoholic. It's amazing how confused we are. Sometimes you post it on Instagram, self-love. It's all about self contemplating suicide after you finish posting. Eagles and chickens. Chickens and eagles. And both of them are in you. You can be at church on Sunday praising the Lord, thanking him for how good he is. Let somebody look at you wrong. You'll be ready to fight before you get to your car. T touch your name and say, I'm just, I'm only human. I Sometimes I'm ready to go and other times I got anxiety. Sometimes I got a smile on my face because I'm happy. Other times I got a smile on my face because I think that's what you expect from me. Oh, there ought to be a woman here say, sometimes I feel like being a wife, but sometimes I just want to tell you do it yourself because you used to say the juice was sweet. Now you're saying it's sour. All right, see, y'all don't, y'all, see, y'all, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you don't know that. I know you're too young, but I'm not your superwoman. I'm not the kind of girl that you can let down and think that everything is okay. I am only... I know you say the juice is sour, it used to be so sweet, but I can't help but to wonder if you're talking about me. We don't talk the way we... And it's hurting me deep. I got my pride, I will not. Mm -hmm. Evidently, she was in pain when she wrote that story. I'm 
not your Superman. I'm not your superwoman. I'm not your daddy. I know your daddy did certain things, but I am not him. Every once in a while, you find yourself wondering, who am I? Did what I do really matter? There ought to be some parents in here that can get with that. You gave them the best you could. Gave them the best education you could. Woke up early in the morning after working late to take them to school so they didn't have to catch the bus. Put the best clothes on them. Cooked them breakfast. And now they don't even call you. Anybody just want to be honest? I, I know we're holy. I know we're here. And, and I know we're in church. But anybody ever wonder, what is going on? Somebody just said, I'm only human. The fact that David was vacillating between confidence and crying while he was a man after God's own heart. The fact that he was depressed and despondent while he was the king of Judah. The fact that he was having anxiety while he was the king of Israel. The fact that he was afraid after having won every battle that he had ever waged shows us that I am okay if I am not always confident. That it doesn't mean I'm not saved because I got questions. It doesn't mean I am unholy because I don't always quote scripture. Oh, help me somebody in here today. It took me 27 years to realize that no matter how much I studied, no matter how much I prayed, I was only human because after the sermon was over, I had to stand in my own skin. After the message was over, I had to become, uh, I had to face my own reality. Here is the actual idea that I am trying to get you to understand. The moment you recognize you are not God, The moment you recognize that he is not asking you to be him, but he's only asking you to be in the image of him. The moment you recognize that you can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The moment you recognize that you can't satisfy everybody who wants your time. The moment you recognize that even if you give them all you got, it ain't enough. Even once you recognize that you're only human, you will be okay with people's opinions about you. It took me 27 years to recognize that people always say that the pulpit should be graceful. Watch this. You ever remember people hating to go to church because they talked about how the preacher only preached fire and brimstone? That whenever the preacher was harsh and told people what you need to do, it's only recently that I found out that people want grace from the pulpit, but they have none for it. Because every time a preacher makes a mistake, y'all dog them, you drag them, you cancel them. But we pray for you. I'm a, it's my party. I'm a preach today. I'm a preach today. Because when you on your third husband, you need prayer. But when we on ours, we need a new career. You got five baby daddies and six kids, but let the preacher have more than one, and all of a sudden he ain't anointed. Well, neither are you. This might be my last sermon, so let's get it. Everybody wants grace from the podium. But we have none for it. And the reason why the black community is missing leaders is because you have been tricked into crucifying your own leadership. And you counsel all of your heroes and you wonder why you have none left. Meanwhile, on the other side, You can be on drugs, you need prayer. The preacher get addicted to something, he ain't got no anointing. It's 
so David finally realized, I can't depend on these people. I, I can't depend on this army. I can't depend on my subjects. The Lord is my light. It took me 27 years to find out all I had was the Lord. It took me 27 years that he was the only one who would rock me in the cradle of his arms. It took me 27 years to recognize that I'd rather have Jesus help me somebody than silver and gold. And I must admit that after 27 years, there have been times I wanted to quit. After 27 years, after giving my life to people who wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. 27 years after showing up to every funeral and every wedding for people to only to abandon you when you needed them. I realized the Lord was my light and my salvation. Are you with me today? David wrote this psalm in a difficult season of his life. He was running for his life. And he says something that if you were really able to articulate the scripture, the first few words of the scripture should be the sermon. I should be able to say this and be done. I know it's not going to be enough. But David says something that changes the game. Are you ready for it? The Lord. See, see that ought to be enough, see? You needed to say the Lord is my money. The Lord is my, he gave me my husband. The Lord did this. No, just, just. Let me talk to this side over here. Because see, the reason why we don't praise like we should on that statement is because we always need a noun to follow that. The Lord is my, the Lord is my. No, just simply. All right, let me say it to the middle. Let me say it to the middle because we don't shout. The Lord gave me the Bentley. The Lord gave me the house. No, just, to, just, just. Anybody in here just want to thank? Just, just thank the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. The Lord. In other words, David was saying that whatever I need, the Lord is. That, that's really the sermon. The Lord. Who woke you up this morning? Not your alarm clock. Somebody's alarm clock is going off right now, but they're not moving. You know who touched you? As the old preacher would say, with a finger of love and woke you up this morning, it was the Lord. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. The Lord is my salvation. Everybody just shout, the Lord. This is the only place in the Old Testament where the Lord is called light. He's called, he's never called light in the Old Testament, save the new. He is not called light in the Old Testament. This is the only time that the Lord is called light in the New Testament. And if we don't pause to scrutinize this particular portion of scripture, parenthetically, we will miss what the writer is saying. The Lord is my light. Everybody say he's my light. He's my light. If you, don't, if you don't pause here, you're going to miss it. A couple of things we need to understand. When, the David, when David said the Lord is my light, he was saying something that science would yet later prove that he didn't know he was saying at the time. When he said the Lord is my light, he was prophesying. He didn't know what he was saying. He was just talking about his experience. But other scientists and engineers would later figure out something about what David said many millennia after he had said it. The Lord is my everybody say light. You need to know a couple things about light. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And on the first day, he said, let there be. Are you here with me? He said, let there be light. And there was light. In the Old Testament, uh, the presence of the Lord was manifested by the Shekinah glory, which was light. When, when Paul was on the road to Damascus and he was about to be transformed from Saul to Paul, it did not happen as a result of a Bible study. It happened as a result of light. And the Bible says he was blinded and fell to the ground and scales began to uh, uh, cover his eyes. Jesus is the light. 
of the world. Light, ladies and gentlemen, is a wave. It's, it's a wave. Uh, if you want to use it uh, for imagery, I want you to imagine a body of water that is still, and you take a rock and you throw it into the still water, and you see the ripples begin to go. See, that's what light is doing in this room, because there is darkness. But when light comes on, there are light waves. That's why sometimes you can see uh, the rays coming from, in fact, the light from stars has been traveling for years before it gets to the earth. In other words, the light that you see is not the light that's happening right now. It has already happened. By the time the light hits your eyes, it's already in the past tense. I'm preaching. You just stay with me. Light is a wave. Everybody say it's a wave. It's a wave. It's a wave. Light is, light is a wave. Uh, and, and when David said that, he says that God is my light. He says the Lord is my light. In other words, the water is still, but when you throw the rock in it, the rock begins to disturb the stillness of the water. The water was doing what it wanted to do until the light got in it. This room was dark until light got in it. There are some things in this room that would have been unseen until the light entered the room. And when light enters into darkness, it disturbs it. You better hear me when I talk to you in this place today. So when David said, watch this, here it is, your first point. When David says, the Lord is my light, he's actually saying the Lord is my disturber. He says that the Lord is my light. So whatever is still in my life, if I add the Lord to it, it begins to move. You better hear me when I'm telling you. That's why some of y'all businesses won't move because you ain't got no light in it. That's why some of your marriages are still because there ain't no Lord in it. That's why some of your ideas are stagnant because there is no Lord in it, no light. Somebody shout light. God told me to tell you that this is the stage and the season of your life where he's about to disturb everything that's still. Some of y'all got business plans you've been wanting to get off the ground. Some of y'all got some ideas that you couldn't get ready. But God told me to tell you, I'm about to disturb it. Somebody give your neighbor a high five and say, he's about to disturb it. Watch this. Not only is light a wave, but it is actually an electromagnetic force. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, because, because uh, if you take a compass out right now, you notice the needle always goes north. Yeah, it's always pointing north. And even when you change direction, the needle always changes with you because the earth has what's called a gravitational or a magnetic pull. Are you with me so far? So everything produces light, and when there ever is, whenever there is darkness, darkness always tries to suck up light. But the problem with that is, is that everything that is on the earth also produces light. Are you with me so far? So you got earth, you got light, which is electromagnetic. Electric means power. Magnetic means draw. God says that whenever you put me in it, I'm going to start making sure that power is attracted to you. Oh, my God. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you thought I was average. But in this next season of my life, I'm about to be powerful. Where are all the powerful people in here today? Matter of fact, you don't know it because you don't practice it. If you go into work tomorrow with your light, you will recognize you more anointed to lead the company than your boss. Matter of fact, some of y'all better get ready to do an about face. You about to take the position of the person who has the education, but you got the light. Somebody shout, I got the light. Matter of fact, I got a double dose of it because not only do I got a light, but I go to the light. Oh, y'all better hear me. That's why you were attracted to this ministry. Your light found my light, and my light found your light. And today, I decree and declare that power is about to be attracted to your I need 500 people shout, I got the power. I got the power over demons. I got the power over witches. I got the power over warlocks. I got the power over cancer. I got the power over lupus. I got the power over tumors and disease. Somebody shout, I got the power. Matter of fact, I need you to do a pew check. I need everybody who got power to look at somebody who ain't moved yet and say, I speak power into your life. If you don't say amen, you're still going to get paid. If you don't say amen, you're still going to be healed. Matter of fact, I'm praying for your children. Some of them live in Alabama. Some of them living in Arkansas and Michigan. But I speak power over your life. Everybody in here who need a financial miracle, take your hand. 
Put it either on your pocket or your person. Shout power. You'll get it on your way home. You'll get it on your way home. Somebody who's been struggling psychologically, lay your hand on your head and shout power. I got so much power, you can't depress me. I got so much power, you can't trip me. I got so much power, if you leave me, I'm still not by myself. Somebody shout power. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, about to help you. I don't even want to give it out this easy, but I got to get there. When Jesus was in the temple and he says, I am the light of the world, he was in the part of the temple called the treasury, where the 13 chests were lined up against the wall. And the reason why they took offerings in the Old Testament was for a couple reasons. Number one, for God to trust your heart. But here is the part that most people don't want to talk about. The offering is taken for the upkeep of the temple. Our grass don't get cut for free because we're holy. And when you go in the bathroom and flush the toilet with your foot because you don't want to touch it and you break it, I got to pay for that. And when you take the paper towels home, some of y'all got my paper towels at your house right now. Don't act like you ain't got a couple of rolls of my toilet paper at your house right now. Holla at your boy. I'm black. I know what we do. Don't act like that. Don't act like you don't go to, to, to uh, Chick-fil-A and, and McDonald's and take all the ketchup. That's why the price is going up because we, we got to pay for what you took. Don't act... Every black house right now got a drawer in it. Excuse me, you though. I, I, I just let me just step on this side. I'll be back. God. All you got a drawer right now in the kitchen with the little plastic knife and fork in packages, salt packages, pepper, ketchup, and Chick-fil-A sauce. Adding it to your own recipe at home. I can go in your car right now, open your glove box, you got this many napkins. Because black folk don't take them one by the black. Only black people go in and ask for a water cup and get Sprite. Tell me. Tell him I'm, I'm only human. I, it was there, so I had to. One of the purposes for taking offerings is for the upkeep of the temple. You can't ask God for new furniture at your house and be satisfied with the church being raggedy. So one of the reasons was for the upkeep of the temple. The other reason was to buy firewood because they didn't have electricity. So they bought firewood. Watch this. Everything has a purpose. Firewood to start a fire to light incense. The incense were used to light the candles. The candle was made out of menorah, which was the garments of the priest. Because the truth is, you can't have light without a priest. I want to talk to you all online, and I want to talk to everybody in this building. I know they keep telling you that you don't need to go to church, and you can stay home and watch online. But baby, you need a priest that you know, and a priest that know you. Somebody who can pray the devil off of your child. Somebody who can lay hands on the sick. I know you don't want to say man, but say ouch. The problem with the church is we got a lot of members that don't want priests. That's why Jesus is the light of Israel. And there is no longer a high priest because he is now the priest. And when they would light the candle in the temple, 
One writer says the reason why they had to do it because without the light in the temple, it was always night. So they had to have the lamps lit in order to turn night into day. Can I tell you what the Lord told me to tell you? That in this next season, he's about to give you the power to turn night I'm t you got it in today you're going to have the power that even when the enemy wants you depressed you're going to still smile you're going to have the power to stand even when you feel like falling you're going to have the power to pray when you want to give up and quit. Somebody over the next 30 seconds begin to light this place on fire and thank God that the power to turn night into day is now in your hands. Somebody shout, I got the power. I ain't going to have to call a preacher to pray for my child. I'm going to lay hands on my child and that child is going to get off of drugs. Matter of fact, somebody encourage yourself in the Lord right now and over the next 15 seconds shout, I got the power. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He's a disturber. Get ready for your life to confuse you. Some of you are comfortable, and God says, I've come to disturb you because you are settling for average, and I made you great. I know y'all got it. I'm coming to disturb you because you comfortable getting paid $20 an hour. I made you to make $2,000 a minute. Let me talk. You are comfortable with working for somebody, but I made you to have somebody working for. I'm coming to disturb you. Do me a favor, find somebody who don't look like they got a, an attitude and just shake them and say, wake up. They got an attitude, don't touch them, leave them right where they at. If they frown and leave them right where they at. But I'm only speaking to about 27 of y'all in here. Somebody shout, I, I, I'm being disturbed, I'm being disturbed. I can't sleep at night. I keep waking up at three o'clock in the morning. I keep writing stuff on paper. I can't have a meal without daydreaming. Everything I touch, God keeps telling me I can have it. I don't know why I can own this house cash, but God told me I can. I don't know why I can pay for my child to go to college, but God told me I can. I'm getting ready to disturb you. Your mama didn't do it. Your daddy didn't do it, but you're about to do it. You are a disturber. Somebody shout, Lord, disturb me. Disturb me. Disturb me so much where I irritate the people who are comfortable with me. Disturb me so much that I don't have to tell people I don't want to be friends with you. After they look at how disturbed I am, they'll leave me. Oh, you better hear what I said. You better get ready for people to walk away from you. God says, I'm about to disturb your circle. You've been friends for 15 years. They're not going to like you next week because you're going to be disturbed. Somebody shout disruption. You're about to change what normally is for your whole family. The word million is going to be common in the vernacular of conversation in your family. Education, degree, words like graduate, words that most people in your family don't ever say. God's about to use you and your children to disturb. God says, not only am I a disturber, because when I start disturbing stuff, the enemy going to get mad. So when you get off of welfare and when you get off of food stamps and assistance and, 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 and God starts putting you in the place of empowerment, the devil's going to try to sift you like wheat. But God says, don't worry about that because not only am I a disturber, I'm a defender. <laughs> the Lord is my light and my son. He is also my fortress. I'm a, I'm a defender. I'm going to finish. Before I give you this, I just want to let you know God's got your back. 
He's got your back. It took me 27 years to realize that I had been worrying about things that never happened. I can't tell you how many hours I wasted worrying about stuff that never took place. Worried about enemies who I never had to worry about. The Lord is my what? Fortress. Here's what the Lord told me, Pastor Torrance. He said, a fortress gives me two opportunities. Number one, it gives me an opportunity to prepare while the enemy is marching. <laughs> Second thing about a fortress, uh, I have recently, because of my sister and my brother, been wasting my time watching Game of Thrones. Now, I know I'm late. I know that show came on in 1957, and I'm just now watching it, but it has taught me so much because the kingdoms are always elevated. Every castle, whether it's at Winterfell, whether it's the Lannisters, whatever they're coming to get, it's always elevated. Then the Lord gave me a revelation. You will never be attacked by anybody on the same level as you. The fact that you are attacking me shows me the separation. Oh, you better hear me. Every person who's lying on you has just told you you're higher than me. Every person that's trying to pull you down has just told you you're higher than me. Every person on your job that's trying to get you fired is afraid that you'll get the promotion over them. Shout, I'm higher than that. The Lord is my fortress. In other words, he's about to elevate you. I know you used to where you are, but you better get ready for another level. I've told this story for some, some heard it before, but let me tell it again. If you know anything about heights, mountains, and elevations, on every mountain, Scientifically, it is proven that there is something on the mountain, every mountain, called a snake line. Snakes, there is a certain atmosphere where snakes hit a threshold and they turn around. And they go back because you can get so high where snakes can't follow can I give you a word? If you're always being betrayed, if you're always being lied on, if you're always being misused, it's an indicator that you live too low. You ain't got to fuss. You ain't got to cuss. Just level up. Oh, man. I got a vision and ain't nobody around to help me. Oh, now I got a vision, but everybody next to me wants it. I'm going out to dinner, never having a conversation about things, always about people. Always talking about high school instead of trying to figure out how to start a school. Touch somebody and say, level up. Matter of fact, I need you to level up in your praise right now. If you sit next to somebody who ain't said nothing all day, I want you to spend the next 30 seconds making hell nervous and making everybody around you understand I'm about to level up in my praise because I recognize when praises go up, blessings come down. Somebody shout, yeah. Somebody shout, level up, level up, level up. I want you to shout until the roof shakes in this place. God told me to tell you he's a defender. Oh, that was all right. That was all right. I'm going to bag off. I just want the real people in here that understand that you are not here because you're smart. You're only here by the grace of God. Somebody shout, I'm only human. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to shout in this place and recognize that if it were not for the Lord on your side, it wasn't your money, and it wasn't your education, and it wasn't your connections. You walked this far by faith, 
open up your mouth and shout in this place. Oh, come on, come on. The angel's about to trouble the water. Something's about to happen in this place. Give your neighbor a high five and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you uh, that everything uh, is going to be all right. Turn uh, to a neighbor beside you and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you uh, that everything is uh, going to be all right. Turn uh, and find somebody else and shout neighbor. God told me to tell you uh, if you hold on uh, just a little while longer, weeping me uh, endure for night. But somebody shout joy, it's going to come in the morning. I got no sermon, but I'm out of time. Find you a neighbor and shout neighbor. Matter of fact, find somebody. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, I need you to do something with me. Turn around in a circle. Did they do it? I said, did they do it? I said, did they do it? Find you somebody else. Say, neighbor, I need you to do me a favor. Turn. Did they do it? Find you somebody else. Shout, neighbor. Turn. Good God Almighty, say neighbor, you might be wondering why I keep turning around. The reason why I keep turning around, because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, he deals with my enemies. Every time I turn around, I find money in my pocket. Every time I turn around, cancer cells dry up. Every time. Uh, I didn't mean to feel like this. Somebody shouted, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to leave y'all alone. But David said, every time they came up against me, they stumbled. And fell, not stumbled or failed. Conjunction function, stumbled and fell. Because you can stumble and still be on your feet. But if you fall, you got to go all the way down. Somebody shout, he's a defender. God told me to tell you the destiny for anybody coming up against you is down. Tell your neighbor, if you want to stay up, you better leave me alone because everything that comes up against me is going down. Shout it, yeah! Yeah! I gotta let y'all go. David said that I may dwell, not visit, that I may dwell, not go by, but that I may dwell. The word dwell means to become a citizen. I'm about to tell y'all something, because some of y'all are used to having good days and bad days. Some of y'all are used to having high seasons and low seasons. God said, I'm about to flip the script and put you on a rock and a high place. And that's where you will live from now on. <laughs> no more up. And sometimes down, it's going to be up, 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 and away. Did you hear what I said? 
God told me to tell you that he's about to tell you something that the worst days of your future are going to be better than the best days of your past somebody shout I'm dwelling here I'm dwelling here I'm dwelling here I'm dwelling here peace is about to be your portion happiness is about to be your reality God's gonna set you up on a rock so the devil can't steal your joy remember he's a serpent you go high enough he can't reach you anytime I hear somebody continuously telling me what the devil did to them it's because I know they live in too long I never will forget I wrote a book called The Shift. And when I released it, at that same time that I released it, a blogger released some fictitious story because you know they need you to get ratings. And I was afraid because I thought that I'm done. If you sit down, you sit down, stand up, whatever, I'm finished. It, I, thought, I thought that when the story released that I was going to lose the book deal. Not because it was true, but because in this day and time, it don't have to be true for some people to believe it. It's amazing some of the stupid stuff y'all believe. At that time, a lady had came out and said that her two children were mine. Problem was, they was nine when I met them. And since people want to believe ignorant stuff, they would say, probably is. But if you knew who I was and knew where I came from, I couldn't have a child in the earth that I wouldn't take care of, no matter how they got here. So I thought I was going to lose the book deal. And I went to the editor and I was anxious and I said, I understand if, you know, you can't do it. And, I know, I know how it goes. And she said, where are you coming from? I said, I've been reading all the stuff online and I, I know how that affects stuff. This lady said something that delivered me. She said, Pastor Henderson, the people who read books don't write stupid comments online. She said, people who write, who read books don't tear people down online. She says, you are not even, she says, you are afraid of people who are not your audience. She said, bottom feeders don't read books. The people who buy and read books will know that, that stupidity. And she said, she said, let me go a step further. The people who will buy your book don't even know it's been written. And she said, don't you go in the pulpit talking about it because the first time they'll hear about it is from you. It was then that I recognized something it took me 27 years to recognize as a man of God. And I was beating myself up and I had to recognize I'm only human. That I, as I stand here under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I am but a man. I am but a man. Afraid sometimes, but still anointed. frustrated sometimes but still full of faith and I read something where it says charity begins at home it took me 27 years to recognize this that as God continues to grow as they stated our global ministry the Lord gave me the revelation he always told me this he said Keon charity begins at home 
And he showed me as long as I got you, I could handle them. Because as long as I'm your leader, and as long as I'm influencing your family, they become the byproducts of what we've built together. And he showed me to never become so focused on people who know of you. And always be focused on the people who really know you. And I wish I would have known you July 27th, 1995. I would have told you before I knew you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I'm inspired because of you. And I keep preaching because of him. And when they try to make us superhuman, it's a setup. Because you can only do this if you really recognize that you are only human. It's translated for you. The reason why some of you all are struggling is because you're trying to live up to an expectation you will never meet. You feel like you're a failure as a parent because you don't do everything your children need. They don't do everything you need either. You better hear what I'm telling you. You work for a boss right now they don't really love you like that. They love what you do for them. But let you be late two or three days in a row and see how much they love you. The realization that you are only human is the only way you can operate under the anointing. Please, as we spend the next 27 years together, do me one favor. Realize that I am only human. Sometimes the Lord is my light and is my salvation and I will not be afraid and sometimes I'm confident. Verse 7, sometimes I'm hiding and I'm, and I'm wondering and I, and I want to know that I make the right decision and I want to know if what they said will really stick. I'm, I'm both. And as Bishop said, sometimes the problem with people who have an anointing is that we operate in a function that to others may look easy. But let me tell you, this is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Can I tell you that if I could quit, I would. Let me say this to every preacher in the house. If you can quit, hurry up and do it. Let me say it again. Every preacher, listen to me. If you can quit preaching, quit now. Because when you are called, you cannot. You cannot quit. Being able to quit is proof that you haven't been called. Who wants to sign up to be ridiculed? Who wants to sign up to be ostracized? See, the difference between me and you is I'm on this stage and these lights show you every blemish on my face, but you got darkness and makeup. I just can't see you. But if I get you up here, I'll find your stuff too. Some of you all can go as you please, and it's fine. Me? Every step is scrutinized. Have, do you ever know what it feels like sometimes to be judged by people less perfect than you? <laughs> they judge you and they nasty. They judge you and they're liars. They judge you 
and their pretenders. But I think that one of the salvations of preaching, Pastor Mark, Pastor Torrance, as we carry this gospel plow, Pastor Sion, it's best to just let the people know I'm only human. I'm only human. I'm doing the best I can with what I've been given. And over the next 27 years, I don't know what's that. How old will I be in 27 years? Somebody do the math. 67? Am I going to be here at 67? 68? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be here, y'all. I don't think I'm going to be preaching at 68. Not every Sunday. You ain't going to be working at 68. Why well, I got to be here? See how y'all do the preaching? You're going to retire at 50 if you can. I think one of the mistakes of the modern minister or the postmodern minister is to do this until you die. At 68, y'all ain't going to want to hear what I got to say. It's going to be some young thundercat around here running around preaching. And y'all might come here every once in a while, but y'all going to be visiting over there. I know how church go. I'm going to be up here preaching from the Bible, not looking up because I can't see. And you're going to be online watching somebody else's church. I'm only human. In all seriousness, this is what I want you to get from this message. David was a king. David had a ministry, and yet he was afraid, and yet he was fearful. You got Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee here. You can see her at the podium in Washington talking about reparations. You can see her talking about guns, but I can tell you right now, she does it with fear of the Lord because there's no way to be outspoken and not be afraid. But here's the, the lesson that I want you to get. Are you listening to me? If I teach you anything else, stand on your feet. We're going home. If you are afraid, do it anyway. I want you to do it afraid. I want you to do it scared. I want you to do it confused. I want you to do it even when you don't know where the next dime is coming from. I want you to do it whether you have support or not. If God gave you something, somebody shall do it. You won't always have support, but you're going to have to do it. They won't always understand you, but you're going to have to do it anyway. You may open the business and no customers walk through the door, but you're going to have to open it. Do me a favor. Find out if you will fail before you decide to. Fail before you quit. Shalene, when we started this church, what did they tell us? We weren't going to last a year. They told us we wouldn't last a year. Well, I don't know what next year holds, but I know they lied. Come October, this church will be 13 years old. And Harold, when I moved to Houston, Texas, I moved here. All of my clothes were packed in my car, in the trunk, the back seat, and the passenger seat. I only had enough room to get in the driver's seat. And I spent $900 to ship my car to Houston. I got here and did not have an apartment to live in. When I got here, I asked people, where do you live? They said the Galleria area. <laughs> and I had never paid more than $200 for rent. So you understand that when I got here and found out that a one bedroom was $1,800. And by faith, I signed the paperwork. Got a job at a local church. Worked there for nine months. And all of a sudden on a Sunday morning, with a church full just like this, and I was sitting right where you're sitting at, Pastor Baker, and the minister grabbed the microphone, and he walked down to the floor of the church. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a church meeting. There are people in here shouting because they was there. They were there. 
If you were there, just raise your hand so people know I'm not telling a lie. Look around. The minister looked at me or looked right over me as if I was not human and said, I just want to let you know this is Brother Henderson's last Sunday. And he fired me without a warning. I had never been late. I'd never been insubordinate. I'd never done anything wrong. And he said, leave. Put me out of the church in front of everybody. And let me tell you what I did. Todd, he fired me. Somebody in the back of the church said, Pastor, he's still a member of this church right now. He said, you told us that Pastor Henderson was going to be our next pastor. Now, did you lie or did God lie? The minister says, sit down. This is my church. I didn't ask you to bring them. I ain't got to ask you to get rid of them. I walked over to the pastor while he was talking. And I stood beside him. And after he finished talking, I did the same thing I did last Sunday. I grabbed his briefcase and I walked him to the back and served him just like I did the Sunday before. And I walked him to his office and I set the briefcase right next to his desk like I did the Sunday before. And he looked me in my eye and I took $200 out of my pocket, which is all I had. And I shook his hand and said, thank you for the time. He asked me to walk out of the door. I began to walk out of the door. And some of these people you're looking at, they started shaking my hand with money in it. They started shaking my hand with money in it. And by the time I got to the back door, I had $6,000 worth of handshakes. Are y'all not here with me? Some of those same people came to me and said, we should start a church. I said, I would, but not like this. I said, I will not start a church with people who will leave another church. Because if I start a church with the people who will leave a church, then it won't be long before you leave me. So I left and came back to the same church the next Sunday and sat on the front row embarrassed. But I knew God had assigned me there. There was a family that lived on the same street as the church. They joined the Sunday that I got fired. Come to find out they didn't join the church, they had joined me. So they said, Pastor, um, we didn't come to join this church, we came to join you. So I tell you what, meet us at our house. Come to our living room and we'll start a church with us because we joined you. So I started with them. They gave me the address. I had no idea that the house and the address, it didn't register because I was in trauma. The house was about six or seven houses down from the church. So when I was using the navigation system to get to the house, I drove past the church to get to the house. And I sat in their living room and we started the church and I told the family, I said, if you're really serious about this, you got to go evangelize because I don't want to be responsible for splitting somebody's church. I don't want them. I want who God has for me. Those people rented a church building. Chris, am I telling the truth? Her and her mama. Your mama here? Is she here? Mama Ida, am I telling the truth? They, they came. Mother Ida told me, she said, Pastor, now I'm, I'm good for two things. She said, I'm good for praising and I carry a knife. And I'll, I get both of them, both of them are at your disposal. Mom, am I t and she's been with me ever since. Y'all give Peter a hand. I know it. You still got it, Mama? Thank you, baby. Mama done upgraded too. She got shotguns and all kind of stuff. She done upgraded. Because she knew that I hadn't, I hadn't deserved it. Y'all, please just give me a minute. I'm telling you how I got here. Those people, those five people, they rented a church building just so we could have a meeting in the basement. And when I walked in the basement of what I expected to be five people, there were 132 people in this basement.
I had never seen them in my life. I didn't know them and they didn't know me. But the Lord is my light. And uh, the 132, we rented, Mama Barbara, we rented a room in the humble civic center. Because my experience was, you know, people will be with you on the first Sunday, but the next Sunday they're going to fall off. So I rented Brother Hall a, a, a room that had 50 seats. And when I got there, it was only five people. And I knew, I knew then that the devil had got me. Because I said, you know what? I done stepped out here on faith. And all them people that said they had me wasn't there. And I went in the bathroom, Congresswoman, and I cried. I cried. Because I'd given all the $700 I had to my name, rented a space, had a microphone with a six-foot cord connected <laughs> to a karaoke machine. And the keyboard sitting in a chair played by a guy named Ronnie Mason. And I walked out. And it was 50 people in the room. And I looked around the corner. It was 250 people standing outside of the room that couldn't get in. Then we left there and went to the Holiday Inn on JFK. And it had a room with 400 seats in it. And I signed a six-month contract thinking that we were going to be there for six months. By the third Sunday, they put us out because we had too many people in the hotel. Then we went to Humble Middle School. Outgrew it. Went to Kingwood High School, outgrew it. Went to Summer Creek High School, outgrew it. And then I went to the church and said, church, we got $1.2 million in the bank. I said, do you trust me? They said, yes. You remember that, Elliot? Took the $1.2 million, bought a piece of property on Wilson Road in the Beltway. Ben, you remember this, don't you? Bought 10 acres of land. But I had a meeting with Mr. Hall and the mayor at that time and Congresswoman and I asked them where is the growth going to happen in Houston and they told me where it was so I brought property where growth was coming. Bought it for 1.2 million dollars. I sold it in three months for 3.6 million. But the problem was is I didn't know that you had to wait 36 months in order to sell property that you buy when you're 501c3 otherwise you have to have rollback taxes and you have to pay them so the person who bought the property from us sued us but because i got a pit bull name i can't give you the semantics but not only did we not pay they paid us seven hundred thousand for suing us so i took the proceeds from the land and the proceeds from the lawsuit And I walked into this building and I asked the pastor, would he sell it to us? He told us, get out. You don't have enough money to turn the lights on in this building. I'm just showing you how I got here. Right back in that office. There were 900 burgundy chairs in this room. Raggedy and dirty as I don't know what. Said, get out. Where's Steve Taylor? Steve was with me. You videotaped it on your phone. He told us to get out. I looked at him and I bagged out. What did I tell him, Steve? I said, I'll be back. Oh, brother, be back. Brother, be back. I came back to him and I said, uh, sir, we did a little research. Find out that you were behind on taxes. Now, we can do this one or two ways. I said, how much would you sell the building for? He said, 8.9 million. I said, the Lord told me the building was worth 6.4. And I'm not paying more than that. He said, get out. Came back 30 days later. I said, sir, now you in my building. You got to get out. I said, how much would you sell it for? He said, 7.9, whole million. I said, now, nah, remember what I had told you, 6.4, get out. I left. 
Came back 30 days later, I said, sir, now I'm going to get you for trespassing. Now we're having fun, we're laughing. I said, this is my building, and I'm paying $6.4 million. Now, I picked that number based on what we had, not what it was worth. He said, 6.9. I said, what part of 6.4 don't you understand? Jackie, how much did we buy the building for? $6.4 million. And all 30 acres. And now, what we bought for $6.4 million has another $7 million building going up. $3 million worth of upgrade and the appreciation value for this property. You do the math. We bought it for six four. It's now worth twenty, and we only owe three. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And I'm believing God that in the next three years, it'll be paid off. Somebody shall pay it in full. Why? Because in order to be debt free in your life, we got to be debt free as a church. I want somebody to spend the next 45 seconds thanking God that the debt is already paid. The debt is paid on the house. The debt is paid on the loan. The debt is paid on the... Somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free in my finances. I'm free in my mind. I'm free in my endeavors. All of that from a young boy whose mother worked at Taco Bell and made $6 an hour and raised four kids in a two-bedroom with one bathroom, three daughters, and a son by herself. She right here. She did it without a college education. She did it without a father, meaning ours. She did it without ever receiving child support once. But she taught me some stuff. If you're going to do it, you better do it right. People don't have to be nice, and when they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Be respectful. Be honorable. And above all, can I tell you how we got here? And I'm gonna let you go. It's my party. I learned the power of serving. Yeah. Pastor Baker and his wife and my wife are talking about today, if we don't find out how to show this next generation how to be servants, we're gonna lose the whole thing. It's okay to be paid sometime, but where's your reasonable service? Serve. Stand to your feet all over this building. Twenty-seven years. I've been standing on my watch. Pastor Sion will tell you, we grew up on streets where if there were 20 houses, 18 of them was abandoned. In fact, the street that his church is on, if it were not for his church and the properties they would acquire, the entire block would be abandoned. Grew up fighting. Learn how to make it on nothing. Learn how to put butter and cinnamon and sugar on a piece of bread and call it a Cinnabon. Sometimes I know it. I grew up squeezing lemons in water and putting sugar in it, calling it lemonade. Huh? Grew up frying bologna with a little red plastic around it. 
and you knew it was done when it puffed up in the middle and you had to stick a fork in it. <laughs> Looked like a nuclear bomb went off. Grew up leaving the oven open, calling it a heater. <laughs> Grew up using the old milk jug, putting the water in and putting it in the refrigerator, calling it the water jug. Yeah. All this bottled water y'all drinking, we drink it now. I used to drink it out the water hose. Tasted like steel anyway, I still was drinking it. All I'm trying to tell you, you can look up here, see these lights, see these screens, you can, you can think everything is all right, but I'm, I'm only human. I'm only human. And where we are right now, this ain't make me. I was made by what came before this. No. It ain't no car. It ain't no house. It ain't no clothes. It's the anointing. I'll preach to you in gym shoes, a t-shirt, and a pair of jeans. I don't care nothing about none of it. All I want is your life to be changed. For your life to be improved. That's what I call ministry. That's what I call ministry. Thank you for coming. Because I was scared it wasn't going to be nobody here but me, Shawnee, Pastor Baker, and a couple of y'all. Everybody tell you, we don't ever have night service, Congresswoman. So I was like, oh, Lord, is these folks going to come to church at night? Because, see, we got that new church. They don't go to church a lot, you know. They go sometime. <laughs> and you came. And you came to my party and you celebrated with me. And I want to thank you. And can you thank my wife for making sure that I had one? Because I didn't have enough sense to ask for it for myself. So she said, you need to celebrate 27 years. She said, you need to stop combining your birthday with that. Because that's two different things. Your birthday is different from your ministry. And stop making it one thing. I'm telling you, you get a good woman in your life, things will start falling in place and you'll be on order. That's a good woman. I said, that's a good woman. That's a good woman. Can I tell you this? If you're in this place today, me and you, we got something in common. Can I just be real with you? I wish, I wish we was in your living room right now and I was sitting on your couch. Like my buddy Udo, he got, this, he got this coffee machine in his house and I don't even drink coffee, but I let him give me a cup of it. You know you got expensive cup, coffee when it come in a cup this little? What is it called? Espresso. That's what he did. That's what he got. And he gave me this little bitty coffee cup. Oh, he's, he's such a gentleman. He and his wife, they'll put it on a platter and they would bring it over to the house just to serve us coffee. Espresso in a little bitty cup. And I, I don't even drink coffee, but I... <laughs> Everything you will do in life will advance when you're surrounded by friends. When you're surrounded by friends. Me and you, we got something in common. I'm no better than you. You're no better than me. We just got something in common. We're all human. But I don't want to get here in year 28 and you in the same position you are in year 27. I'm challenging you to walk with me every Sunday for the next year and see don't we get here next year and your life be better. How many of y'all going to walk that journey with me? Just one year of your life will change the rest. Look at your neighbor and say every day. Play that. We're getting ready to go home. We're getting ready to go home. We're getting ready to go home. God, we thank you today that you have brought us to this place. And thank you that you didn't let me quit. Thank you that you didn't let me turn in the towel. Thank you that you didn't let my trauma crush me. Thank you that you let me live long enough to see what I could become. Thank you that you're still stirring up the gift in me. Thank you. 
that you didn't let arrogance get me thank you that you didn't let entitlement get me thank you that I have the mama that I had thank you that I have the father that I have thank you for the siblings that I have thank you for the experiences that I have thank you for the friends I have and yes thank you for my enemies bless them too bless this church and everybody who stands under the sound of my voice and those online that no weapon formed against them will be able to prosper and every lying tongue that rises up against them shall be condemned thank you God that the ladder is on its way and we're on our way to the next level if you believe it open up your mouth and begin to praise the Lord in this place come on, open up your mouth give him glory come on come on come on give him glory somebody praise him like it's already done Somebody shout, the Lord is. The Lord is my light and salvation. Hallelujah. Who shall I fear? Yes, God. Who shall I fear? I will wait. I will wait on you. Somebody shout it. I will trust. I will wait on you. I will trust. Somebody shout, I will remain. I will remain. I will see the Come on, Cody, play that real quick. We're getting ready to go home, but we're going to go home praising. pray that you will get home and find everything in order and everybody who loves the Lord shout hallelujah. hallelujah 
Shout amen. Tell somebody on the way, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God bless you.